So a bunch of people failed the one standard on the data integrity and testing criteria just for achieved level. So I just wanted to go through that. Going back to the assessment schedule, let's just read this through. So applying appropriate data integrity and testing procedures, what you need to do. So for example, the information has been imported correctly into the database, no duplicate or blank records. Filters and queries display expected results. Summary calculations produce correct results. And graphs, charts display the information clearly and accurately. Let's go through these one by one. So the first one, information imported correctly into the database. No duplicate or blank records. Well, obviously you can check that. Are there any duplicate records? Has anyone like gone in there and clearly put stuff in twice? Uh, has anyone... Uh, like started and then just hit go and there's a blank record. Um, I'll also, is anyone put in some stupid answers? You know, if someone's put in um, like obviously troll kind of answers, well, you can delete that as well. So evidence for that would be uh, a short statement to say that I checked this and it was fine. Or a short statement says I checked, I found that someone had put all these troll answers and there was a problem. One other thing that's a possibility is that you might have designed your survey so well that uh, no one could put in blank or incorrect answers. So for example, this is a survey that I did and it's got teaching experience. And if I had clicked on required, well, there's no other things that they could do. They have to select one of these. So I know that that is um, a valid piece of data at this point in, in the sense at least that they have been forced to select one. Um, so this would be an, also a part of this to say um, I did this required and I did it as a multiple choice so there's no way they could put in a blank record. That would be evidence of data integrity. So a quick screenshot of this and a statement about it and you could do I don't know how many people did the validation thing on short answers but under short answer you were able to say certain validation things so if you said that I had made sure that the answer was validated in this way again you're making sure you get no blank records so that'd be part of that data integrity and testing so that's a really significant part if you do that you're a long way on the pathway uh, the second thing filters and queries display expected results that's just a sanity check really you know if you've got a, uh, a filter you've put something in and it looks right then it probably is right as you could just say that you say my queries display uh, the expected number of results or I double checked it same with the summary calculations you know I was expecting result in this range that's what I got so I was happy that this was um, probably correct and same with the graph and chart displays the information clearly and accurately say so I uh, most of you uh, would have tried a few of the different charts available in Google charts or in picto chart and um, possibly rejected a few you could write a short statement about that saying I tried doing it with this chart it looked really bad it wasn't clearly displaying the information so I rejected that one and did this pie chart instead out of all of that this is probably the key one though They're checking that the data in your database is correct either through going through the spreadsheet afterwards or through making sure that and or showing that um, you had validated your data correctly before it went into the spreadsheet. That would be fine.